<laughs> what if we all became our own gods? Mine's oh, just a god. <laughs> what if we all had to reckon with each other's <laughs> creation? I think, you know what? I've decided I'm not a good collaborator. What do you guys think? I think historically I'm not mm. the easiest to collaborate with because I trust my value. Do you guys think I collaborate well? I feel like a worm. I sometimes. think that I'm not the best collaborator. I don't listen to other people. I ask them questions to make them think like they're part of my process. And then uh, I already have the answers in my head. So, but I mean, I'm, I'm willing to listen to feedback. What do you guys think? Do I collaborate well? I mean, I'm, you know, you're good with everything but time. I, I agree. I agree. I am, I am a good collaborator uh, yeah. for the most part. So Every, thank you, Becker. That is a good note. Everything but time. You're perfect. You're a good boss. You're a hell of a boss. <laughs> Yeah, sorry that I called you Greg the Hammer Valentine, Lund, but you are him in my head. <laughs> you, that's what you look like to me. It's just this smush-faced kind of like Swedish <laughs> ox driver. You know, like you sleep in a cart full of apples and you wake up and you eat the apples and sometimes you're happy when you get a worm. That's what I posted. This is he looks Lund. like <laughs> he looks like one of the when Bart does one of his. Faces that he makes, and he yeah. uh, like pulls his jaw down. Yeah, exactly. Uh huh. Yeah. He's man. Yeah, it hurt me. That guy's smushed. Because that's why I asked if you. That's why I asked if you were watching the Brutus Beefcake Dark Side of the Ring. I watched all of them. He, I watched all of them this weekend. That's him. Yeah. <laughs> that's him. Now or recently, uh -huh. and he looks so bad. He looked bad in 1985. Yeah, he never looked, he looked good. Fucked up. <laughs> he was never a sweet, tasty morsel. Yeah. So I, I, said it, I said in the group chat, everybody to he's Lund, ever. <laughs> you look. You're Greg the Hammer Valentine, <laughs> and he said, <laughs> "You know how much that hurts, right?" <laughs> you're like, being yeah. nasty. <laughs> yeah. That's the worst thing you could say, practically. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you called me Happy Humphrey, uh, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I get it," but. This is you. You're Greg the Hammer Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I watched all he's of got, the... He's uh, got a real frying pan face. Oh, it's bad. It's flat and, like, not deep. There's no depth. It's like all of his uh, facial appendages were glued to his face that morning. Uh, Instead of smusho down from above, it's... Uh, just the face got smushed. Yeah, God took his hands and just put them on the front and back of his head and just <laughs> concrete. Yeah, a concrete whipped cream pot. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I just had some chocolate lasagna, so I woke up. I ate some chocolate lasagna, so I'm in a good place emotionally. What do you mean? Kind in the box from the '90s. Uh, no, I think you're thinking of that delicious frozen treat that they advertised on Channel 2, Becker, you remember, between yeah. Chippendale Rescue Rangers oh, and Pinky and the Brain, the Vianetta like ice cream cake. Uh, Vianetta. Vianetta. Oh, man. Yes. Now, Becker, interesting you brought this up, because when I was out with Tim Dillon, he would not shut up about delicious former novelties of his childhood, and the Vianetta is ever on the forefront of his brain. What's well, back? If, if he... Is it back? It's back. They've reintroduced it. It's in Canadian it's stores already, and it'll be here soon. Okay. Now, I feel like you're just saying that because you didn't remember the name of it, and now you know no. where it's on sale and which markets. No, that's why I was excited. Greg, what do you, you think? That's, that's why I was excited you What do you think down one. there, Greg? <laughs> I thought they were available. Yeah, Me and Brutus, man, we got along just fine. I'm not the best collaborator, it turns out. I'm writing this uh, this opinion piece for this new magazine. I'm the editorial of this new magazine launching called Denverse. And uh, the guy sent me notes on the thing I wrote. And I read the first four sentences of his notes. And I just responded, hi, uh, I understand why you made these edits. But if you want to run this, uh, I can't have my name on it. <laughs> It'll have to be published as anonymous because... <sighs> These are some of the worst. How many commas do you need? This is, I've heard of the Oxford comma, mm. but you put in the uh, hmm. Harvard hyphen. You've added the, uh, the, the Dartmouth umlaut. <laughs> I don't think any of this is necessary. And he just responded with, well, when I got my MFA from Yale, this was the stuff we learned. And I responded, I don't have an MFA, but I read a lot of books. So please see my previous message. That's me collaborating. <laughs> Is me throwing down a gauntlet and ask him, I'll take my ball home. You can you can keep the sand lot, but you can't call it the game that we were playing. And uh, 
Yeah, that's me, man. So I understand that I'm not always the most open-minded when you guys have your crazy ideas. Hey, you know, you guys have said some crazy shit. Let's have a girl on. Um, you know, I've, <laughs> I've said, look, you guys can do that, but you can't call it Chubby Behemoth. You have to call it uh, Nathan Lund's untitled podcast joint featuring Becker and another <laughs> guy whose camera isn't on and is using a voice modulating software. <laughs> what episode was that? Uh, I'm just I'm just saying in general. I was see what I, what I yeah. was doing there was I was trying to um, lay prostrate in front of the listenership who was saying, "Yeah, Sam is a tyrant. Sam is nasty to Becker." You're thinking, yes, yeah, Lund, you're thinking out loud. Lund always flinches whenever Sam raises his hand to reach for his glasses, and I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want it to be a reign of terror type situation, a culture of fear, as I've been accused of. But uh, mm, I think you would. You can collaborate because I'm. We're helping you, and then bringing whatever. That's what and you, you guys can, think, and I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, that it's help. No, it's real. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I, you know what I can do with I'm, Wide World. I can stop. I can collaborate, but I can't listen. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. You got two out of three, <laughs> which is good. Yeah, it's almost good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the listening one is important. No, I was going to say you don't have to take like top down kind of uh, boss type, boss employee uh, feedback like that ever. Right. Because you've been self employed since you had an ice cream truck. Right. Well, and you reported to Clay. <laughs> when I. <laughs> you guys were co owners. When I hot wired that ice cream truck, I never thought that it would lead to a career in show business 15 years later. <laughs> but but yeah, you don't have you don't have to hear that from anyone really because you self published. Uh -huh. You do stand up and don't have to run that by anybody. Oh, oh and so yeah, you know I'm what? sure you. Here, this is fun, Lund. You'll love this. Uh, I turned in uh, a, f a fifty minute set because there's certain streaming services they're taking submissions for next year, and I turned it in and. Uh, my manager, or sorry, my agent said, hey, we had uh, the two assistants in the office who watched these submissions and they gave notes. And I said, oh, okay, so two assistants gave notes on the thing that I've been working on for 20 years. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> what, where did these, yeah. where? Let me get a pad and a pen. <laughs> yeah. let, let me. <laughs> I'm, you know what? I'm gonna pull over right now. <laughs> Please, <laughs> let me hear what Dakota and Shanice have to say about my mm. art <laughs> that I do. Please let me hear. Uh, so yeah, uh, my agent laughed and said, "Hey, good point. Uh, I'll take a look at this because I just can't. I haven't had a real job since I was 19, and by real job, I mean driving around, getting high in an ice cream truck." and embezzling between 30 and $50 in quarters every night. That was my real job. Hey, Creech, can it. He'll be done in 50 minutes. <laughs> God forbid I got the door open for a little air. Yeah. So I just want to say I'm coming clean right now. I'm not the best collaborator. Wide world. Uh, I collaborate with Pat. I collaborate with you guys. You know, I'm good at notes on that. I mean, Pat, that's Pat's vision for the most part. I just gave him the raw material and he built us a little house that we can live in. But uh, we're the clay. He's the sculptor. Yeah. I, I only collaborate with people who uh, look like me. So that's why you're lucky, <laughs> Lund. Uh, Becker, yeah, up top, we're getting similar, more and more similar every day <laughs> because true. your hair is growing back like mine is. Which I have to believe in, or else I'm just going to eat all the pills in that bottle uh, all at once. And then guess what? I'll have the hairiest corpse there is. My hair will keep growing <laughs> after, keep. long after I'm dead. Yeah. You get you get to keep it after uh -huh. you're dead. Yeah. I, you know I can't I I can't take hymns because it's not um it's not you know as open minded. I have to take theys. And. Um, it's, Didn't I say that? Well, I'm just saying that my boy pussy's never been furrier. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm excited. Did I tell you guys about what I said on stage? No, the, I, we haven't talked uh, last night at the show. Um, this was, you know, the show after I became an enemy of God. And uh, there was some, uh, the city council was there last night in Hood River. 
and they were all sitting to the left of the stage, and I was riffing <laughs> with them, blah, blah, blah. And then one guy would, like, laugh, and then he'd go, okay, you know, like, Whoa. <laughs> And uh, about 20 minutes in, I just he, he did it, and I went, why don't you shut the fuck up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But shout out to the Chubby Chasers. Huh. Shout out to all the fans of Sam T Nation who descended on the small palatial village who, of who, Hood River. They came in from they Oregon. The they city came council. in from Bend. Yeah, they were just walking around, ruining taffy stands. Uh, <laughs> Making everybody flinch. Yeah, taking big lollipops away from children and hitting them over the head with it. I mean, dude, these shows, you know, this was like a fundraiser for the Elks, the, the, the Button Bridge Comedy Jamboree. Uh, was taken over by a dangerous sect of uh, American terrorists known as the Chubby Behemoth subreddit. <laughs> it, was, it was nuts, dude. Because, uh, like, you know, the three first, the opening comics were great. They were very funny. But then, all right, you guys ready for your headliner? <laughs> Just barking, toad, ribbit, ribbit. Like, it turned into a petting zoo in there as soon as the host went to bring me oh, on. No. And the energy changes. And then when I walk in, I didn't walk up to fucking Pantera, but it had the exact vibe of when RVD came into the Philadelphia <laughs> arena. Because it was just... I mean, I'm surprised no one gave anyone a stunner through a table. I know that's impossible, Lund. All right? A diamond cutter for you. Doesn't make sense. All right, I'm sorry. But yeah, I mean, it was... And it was funny because Zach Toscani featured last night, who's very funny. But, uh, you know, a couple people came up and they're like, oh, we're so happy. It's uh, You guys are both from AFE, All Fantasy Everything. This is great. And Zach's like, it's nice when people are here that like you. And I'm like, buddy, just wait. And then after the show, I get off and he's like, you were right. A lot of these people were here specifically for you. And I'm like, yeah, it's nice of you to call them people. Because uh, it was nuts, dude. It was. I had such a great weekend of shows, but fuck today, I'm so out of it. Ooh. Done. Oh sure. Yeah. Yeah. No sleep. And I, then... I almost died on the drive this morning multiple times. What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'd... you thought you could hang like me. You thought you were m- more beast than man, like Lund. Yeah. And you tried to. Oh, I just won't sleep like Lund. Right. No, you're not me. I'm not you. I'm not Greg the Hammer Valentine. You're, just a, you're, you're a little boy. Yeah. I'm a man. I am I am a boy because Emily, my understanding of love is that we both have to just like lay on the bed and she has her head on my chest and says, this moment could be forever. Uh, and that's not how it works in adult relationships. It's not a, just a bunch of like, you know, being cozy and talking about your favorite old Degrassi episodes. Uh, so, yeah, I just want everyone to feel loved. Uh, because I'm I'm an, I'm a collaborator. That's what I do. <laughs> well, and I was gonna say you. I I would say the the big issue, the big difference <clears throat> between us and uh, this these examples you've said is that you, when you know and respect somebody, a, a fellow comic or a talented person, you're going to listen way more. But when it's when you know it's randos, and maybe the Denver's thing you know dude went to yale whatever that's cool mm-hmm. good guy so maybe you shouldn't have blasted him sure <laughs> but that is you're going to be a response when you don't know who's saying these things and so you take them as fighting them's fighting 100 percent. what you probably it's, responded to it's a gauntlet <laughs> yeah In i just email. responded with a selfie of me oh, going yeah, like it's this the gauntlet yeah <laughs> I just responded and I said, hey, I got five words for you. And they make one sentence. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that I'm is... not the best at listening to people when I don't uh, automatically respect their opinion. That's why I keep you guys you, close. You would, I think, acknowledge mm, uh, if, if it, you acknowledge if, if we're right about stuff. Correct. Which most people can't do if they're a big big timer or a perfectionist or a real driven person that trusts their instincts more i think that maybe because they're, they're right most of the time my greatest but. strength is that i do, i'm not precious with the material i'm not uh i'm not like we need to work on this thing for a thousand hours before anyone lays their eyes on it when it comes to my writing i you know i sweat over that keyboard before anyone puts their eyes on it but yeah, you know, it's like you got to put it out because we think like, oh, I'm going to work on this special for two years and then, 
you know, uh. people are going to sit and they're going to watch it and they're going to be completely involved in it and they're going to understand the camera angles and they're going to understand what the lighting meant. No, they're on their phones. They're playing MTGA Arena. You know, they look up every now and then and they go, yeah, Toad, you know, and that's that's how they experience <laughs> <laughs> the things that people think matter. Uh, and they fall asleep with their dick in their hand. Yeah. At least it's theirs this time. <laughs> That's a victory. Oh, dude. Have you watched... I forgot to bring it up yesterday because... What is it, Chris Cole? We hit the ground running. Yeah. But <laughs> Baby Reindeer, do you know about this? Uh, is it a rapper from Scandinavia? <laughs> no, it's a Netflix show about a, a, British, a British comic... <laughs> And he has the most crazy story to tell, and uh, it was a play. You know, he did it, he did it at Fringe, but oh, now it's this uh, wow. net Netflix series. But it's wild, dude. Phew! You talk about it's tough being a comic. This fucking guy. What happened? It's tough in the biz. What happened? He got he, stretched, dude. He got like drugged and abused by this dude, and uh, phew, and then stalked by this woman. And she fucks him up because he hadn't dealt with the earlier shit. Just like, damn. Just funny because because he's going through like the worst things you could go through. But he's also a comic, like trying, just trying to like win contests and shit. Damn. And he's got a goofy, um, high energy show. So that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Beep when that, he's Becker. not dealing with, <laughs> we it. can't use those words. <laughs> he's not dealing with it. Yeah. He uh, he, but his act is all. <clears throat> absurd uh-huh. and ridiculous and so uh, it's just so crazy to think about him backstage whatever just <laughs> whoo it's a wild ride and i was glad i watched without knowing uh much about it because phew yeah i mean i could watch that or i could watch it's michael clayton punch. again which i think i would rather do <laughs> than watch anyone stand watch up moneyball ever. oh dude i've watched moneyball i just watched sexy beast again today on the drive home that movie bangs so hard. On the drive home where you almost fell asleep a bunch of times. No, no, this was the drive. This was the two and a half. Okay, this is my travel day. I do the show, you know. My God, he's the best. We love you, Sam. Come on roo, back. Roo, roo. Yeah, yeah. Dude, literally barking. Sign my, sign my back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some drunk guy. Sign my catheter. Sign my hat. Yeah. Sign my... <laughs> It's Zintins. I signed a bunch of Zintins, and then the kids are like, ah, uh, you know, when Randy said you were coming to town, we said, no way, not the toad. And then I go, yeah, the toad's here. The toad is, uh, the toad's here. It's a lot of that. But then I do the show, and then uh, I'm pretty sure the bartender and her, and her husband wanted to fuck me and Zach Toscani. Whoa. They were really, they were letting do it be known. you think it was really... They wanted either or both. The night, or was it Zach, the most handsome man on the West <laughs> Coast? Uh, Zach is a re- sweet piece of meat. And then the rest of the lineup last night was just uh, P- Wad Prototype C, <laughs> Wad Prototype <laughs> F. You know, <laughs> it was uh, it was dudes in shirt that protocol. don't fit. Yeah, and uh, so Zach stood out. <laughs> but the night, the night previous. Uh, we, I was hanging out afterwards um, with the organizers of the festival, Bo, and, uh, and, the, and the staff at the Elks Lodge. I kept calling them all the Grand Wizard. Uh, that wore off pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever charm I thought was in that uh, disappeared. <laughs> but there's this woman named Shannon. She's behind the bar. She's probably 46 years old, maybe early 50s. And uh, she has a long face and uh, gray hair and glasses but there was something about her i just like a i like a sassy broad you know Stop. and uh and i said to this guy tyler who runs the lodge and to Bo, i said there's something about that shannon woman there's something that just speaks to me and Bo says well, that's tyler's wife and i went well hey tyler congratulations you know she's she's got a luster to her and then i think he went and told her and then she came in with a big tray of shots and a whole bottle of tequila and tried to pour them for us all and i was like well i don't really I'm not going to, I don't want to drink or anything. And she says, what about a, what about a a body shot? You know? And I was like, oh, Shannon, you (laughs) rascal. So then they proceed to tell us about how they had like a, they went on a 10 person party uh, uh, to Mexico and like how one of the people there had a live-in prostitute. And, you know, (laughs) you you should have seen the movies they made. And I'm like, LOL. Well, last night, Shannon, Shannon looked like she went up to uh, Macy's and just said, hey, can you give me the pretty woman? Because her and Tyler were... 
<laughs> cut circles in uh, the front of her shirt. Where her nipples <laughs> should be, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> just uh, wide open. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, and she—it was just—you could just tell that there was there was like there's there's a lot of buildings in this room. You guys want to go see them? You know, a lot of hand holding. I was like, you know what? This is flattering. I like both of you guys. Take Tuscany. Let Tuscany pipe you guys. All right. <laughs> so we do the show, and then I fall. yeah, you would have had to pipe both. I would have had to pipe both. I I get you back get, to the had room, to get, get slurped, and it was four twenty, <laughs> so I was very high as you as ones want to be. And uh, they had a basket of treats, and I emptied the basket of treats. I ate a Reese's, mm. I ate a Twix, I ate uh, some kind of puppy chow mix, <laughs> and then I came to, and uh, you know, as 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 Buff Bagwell's father was talking about the time that he almost beat Buff's mother to death, uh, so Buff had to turn a gun on him and shoot him. I come out. <gasps> Check the clock. My flight's at five. It's an hour and a half away. It's two fifteen. I get in the car and I am just nodding off the whole ah rumble strips, bringing me back to life. So Jesus, yeah. So I just start screaming. I screamed myself awake for about an hour. You know, just as soon as I felt my eyes getting heavy, I'd go. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I was listening to the Locust as loud as the rental car. Becker, you'll like this. I had one of those Jeeps. It's a Jeep, but then there's a pickup truck attached to the back. Yeah. Because the Prius that I wanted wasn't available, so I had to drive around in a fucking cyber truck, you know, for some reason. It was impossible to park. So, yeah, I'm just in a cyber truck listening to the Locust on maybe 80. I think 80 was the highest that it went. Just, ah! Windows down on both sides, just ah! oh, man. <laughs> it was insanity. And then get to the plane, return the car, fly home, sleep on the plane, of course, and then drive back. I watch Sexy Beast and ah! Uh, <laughs> ah! screaming for th- an hour and a half. Yeah, just right along ah! the Sexy Beast. Yeah, get home, <laughs> collapse into a puddle, wake up, hey, let's pod. So that's me. Damn. Wow. You, you guys want to hear a fun story that happened yesterday? Yeah. Oh. I know we don't really do that on this podcast. This is more about like uh, catching up on people's political views and where they land on the spectrum. But yesterday, <laughs> uh, I walk. I know ac- where you land on the spectrum. Oh, yeah. I'm full spectrum. Vladimir Putin. I'm full spectrum. He can't, collaborate. He can't collaborate either. Yeah. And he's like the goat. So, you know, <laughs> say what you will. <laughs> but the man has an entire continent on edge. Nay, the world. I haven't had an adult job since I was 19. You know, I'm just <laughs> mm-hmm. a guy. But yesterday, I walk into Anthony's Pizza across the street, and I'm going to get a little slice, you know, after I wake up from my nap. Go in, grab a slice, and they have cannolis. They have fresh-made cannolis, right? So uh, I order the slice, and then there's a woman behind the counter, and I walk over, and I say, hey, can I get six of these cannolis? She says, sure. Puts them on a plate, hands me the plate. I say... Oh, can I get them in a box? (laughs) She says, oh, I thought you were going to eat them here. (laughs) Now, now, how big were they? They were huge cannolis. They were, (laughs) yeah, they can be small. (laughs) uh huh. They were a Red Bull can (laughs) of cannoli, each of them. Yeah. And she said, oh, I thought you were going to eat them here. Now I know I'm a fat guy, and I know that I'm, I'm not in touch with how fat maybe I am sometimes. But I don't think Dome 6 cannolis standing at 4 in the afternoon is how fat I am. Well, you only got one slice, so that probably confused I ordered confused the slice her. from a different person. I ordered the slice from the slice okay. counter, so she didn't know yeah. that I already doesn't put in. Doesn't know what's coming out. Yeah. Yeah, so, she, oh, I thought you were going to eat them here. And that really bummed me out. Because uh, they, they weren't all for me. They were for the green room. I was going to go back across the street yeah. and deliver them to the comedian. Six cannolis. What a nice thing for the headliner to do. And it was just sullied by how fat I guess I present. <laughs> how many did you eat? I had one, and everyone else had one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Becker, you're nodding like you don't believe me. All right? I don't care for that. <laughs> I uh, I went to a food hall and saw some wild shit in line last night. I saw this lady being like very passively racist, but it was a Korean okay. food hall, and I went to go throw my shit away, and I see this like young, like maybe thirty year old white lady standing, I don't know, like this far away from the Asian chef's face, who's speaking clear English. Oh no! And mm-hmm. she just keeps going yum yum sauce, 
And he goes, yeah, we don't have that. And she goes, yum yum sauce? Like he's responding in a foreign <laughs> language. And she did it over oh, and no. over till she's finally like ag- visibly aggravated in his face going, I don't know, yum sauce? Yum sauce. Yum yum. <laughs> Oh, it's just one, yum, one yum. yum. And the guy's in English, and I'm like fucking 10 feet away, and I can hear him saying to her, like, yeah, we don't have that, ma'am. No, ma'am, we don't, ma'am, we don't carry that, but I don't have that. Oof, and she God. just kept repeating it like he didn't understand her, and it was very funny. She's like, he, he's like, ma'am, would you like hoisin or maybe duck sauce, or I can make you some kind of chili paste? Yum, and yum. she's like... Yum yum. Yeah, yeah that's, that was the energy, dude. It was hysterical. Yummo sauce. <laughs> what is Thick that? Thick water. Even? Is it... Thick water. It's like a Japanese <laughs> spicy mayo that they offer in like American restaurants. So that was the other part that was funny to me. She was demanding it from a Korean restaurant. Mm-hmm. And acting yep. like, oh, it was so good. You would have wanted to kill her, Lund. Oh yeah, yeah. To oh, get hard. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> yeah, she wouldn't have lasted. <clears throat> you know what's yum 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 yum. Uh, I would have said I have yum yum sauce, and she would have followed me, and I would have pushed her in front of a train or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm, rubbed my belly. Yeah. Mm, mm-hmm. Yum yum. I'm the cook. <laughs> I'm full. <laughs> Lund, you should go up and do uh, Savage Henry because <clears throat> I think you'll turn a nice little profit. Yeah, the last time it was fun. Yeah, uh, I I I could record a special in that room. I I don't think I don't think I would have sold out two shows in one night like you. No, but you'd sell out one. You do four shows. You no. sell out one. You know, four shows, twenty people each show. Yeah, two hundred fifty bucks. <laughs> flights five sixty. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> well, it's just like. I was saying some of the wildest shit that I've ever said on stage at that late show, and they were like, "Yes," <laughs> you know. I, 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 I had a ton. I had a ton of fun with my set. Yeah. So I did like almost an hour both nights, and it was very fun. But mostly because there were, you know, comic. A lot of comics came, which was cool, and the people that were there were fun. It was a good time. I kept talking about family annihilation and how you know I bet it feels pretty bad afterward, <laughs> but when you're in it, my God, you get when you, when you become God. <clears throat> You know, when you smash those two tiny mirrors in your wife's skull, I mean, I bet that feels pretty good in the moment. <laughs> and it, and that's the point at most shows where I would say something like, how am I losing you on this? But the people were like, yeah, smash them. <laughs> that's why they're up there. They smashed them. They and now did. they have to, yep. they have to go by dusty or whatever. No last name. Yeah. They smashed. A co- I'm just dusty. <laughs> I ate my wife's eyeball in Fresno, and now I'm up here, and I work at the Ace Hardware, and things are fine. Yeah, Dusty and Twig and fucking mm-hmm. Speedo, Hedgy B. <laughs> there was there was what about? <laughs> did you watch? Uh, oh, shit, what's the newest one? Oh, Chris Adams is hanging out with. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> what's his name? Booyard. <laughs> It's not Booyah, but it's some. What's the fucking guy's name? You're talking name? about on the dark side of the ring, the uh, Chris Adams. The guy episode. that killed. Yeah, the guy that killed Chris Adams at the end. He's got like a wig. He looks hilarious. Yeah. Adams like gouged out his eyes and tried to choke him to death, and so he shot him. Uh-huh. But yeah, his name's like. They call oh, they just, yeah. his name's like Jeff, but they yeah. call him like it's like it's like Bango. It's not Booyah, but it's yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, and he's just like a simpleton in Missouri that uh, Chris Adams like met at like a signing event, and then all of a sudden was living in the master bedroom. He like moved into the guy's house and was like, "All right, you sleep on the couch now." And the guy was like, "You got it, Chris." And then and then they're partying, and the man had to shoot him to death. <laughs> yeah, his name was like uh, like Bongo or Bimbus. <laughs> It's something we would use to describe someone with, like, you know, uh, encephalus or something. Anyway, I, I did. I enjoyed. Yeah, you know I thought what? I could find it. but I'll say that I enjoyed the Dark Side of the Ring episodes, season five. Um, <laughs> I'm with Moolah. I'll say that. Ugh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, How'd you get a hold of the new ones it was uh streaming they put me in the suite at the hood river hotel which was very nice and they didn't have to do that but in the suite i had a a variety of streaming catalog and uh yeah 
I had actually a beautiful day until the lady cannoli shamed me because I was just walking around in Oregon. And it's uh, this is where they grow all the apples and pears for uh, for the world, I guess. And there's just these this sea of apple orchards at the top of the hill. And I walked up there and then I walked down and I just like I, I literally laid on the ground in a bed of fallen petals and I told someone that night and I was like, they were like, ugh, gross. And I was like, what? It was, it was transcendent. And they were like, yeah, but you, a bunch of mice probably rolled, like ran all over you. Or you lay, you laid down in like a bed of rat droppings beneath a bunch of petals. And I was like, all right, well, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for letting me know. I thought I had a beautiful moment, but no, I was laying in rat shit as per usual. <laughs> <laughs> covered in fox piss. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's life, man. When you when you go out and you live life and you tell people you're living, they just try and put you right back in the grave. <laughs> you know? <laughs> what did you did you fall asleep? Was were you there for 45 minutes looking at the sky? Uh I was and I tried to film up as the petals were falling on me and then I was like, man, if I show this to anyone, they're going to think that I've totally lost it and I'm up my own ass. So I just laid there and I let the the petals cascade on me for about a half an hour as I listened to uh <laughs> Louis CK on Opie Anthony clips. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> With your mouse friends. Yeah. Yep, just laying in the dung listening to Louis <laughs> talk about Hiring prostitutes in the 90s in New York. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. And now... God, I, I got to get back to you. I got to save you from you. Dude, I need you. <laughs> I, I need you real bad. Because the road <laughs> the road is, is so many curves, and I don't know how to navigate them. And sometimes I drive too fast, and sometimes I drive too slow. So, yeah, I, uh, I need my Lund back, man. Fuck. I'm watching movies while you're fucking driving. Well, I put it uh, I put it behind the steering wheel in front of the odometer. And then, you know, I drive. So you don't know how fast you're going. Yeah, cover that up. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And I just watch uh I watch mid- I guess you slept on the plane, so was that you weren't that wasn't as scary of a drive, right? Uh well, it's not really sleep. It's one of those things where you get on and then you put your sunglasses on and you put your hoodie over and then you sink cinch it down and then the next thing you know, the the wheels are hitting the ground and you're like, you come to just <laughs> you know? It's a lot of thrashing. I thrash awake a lot on planes. <laughs> if you don't remember waking up, that's better. Oh yeah, no, but it's like it's time travel. It's like I go into a portal and then I come out and I'm in the next place. That's how deep I sleep on planes sometimes. Uh, oh, dude, how about when this? I wake up super? I woke up super hard today on the plane <laughs> in my sweatpants. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, tent <laughs> pitch. And then I look over what? and next to me there's like a beautiful 22 year old who I didn't notice sit down because <laughs> I was asleep already because I bored early and I was just like, oh, she thinks I've just been over here with my sunglasses on, staring myself hard. Because <laughs> it was like visible through the sweats. It <laughs> was a good one, huh? What was your color combo, top and bottom? It's what I'm wearing right now: black Carhartt hoodie, gray sweatpants, Colorado State sweatpants, gray pants, of course. Light so pretty gray. much just wearing like you know Saran wrap on your dick. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I had a good one, and I wanted her to be like, "Hey, you know what? This isn't from you." <laughs> You didn't give this to me. I did this all myself. So uh, I don't care that you have the Eve paw prints on the top of your breasts. I didn't notice that until right now. So pump the brakes, little lady. I'm hard on my own accord. Your dream mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think when you go that deep and you're finally that restful, it just becomes a primal thing and you're like a bear. You know, like you're in hibernation, and bears never know if when they wake up if they're going to have to fuck as soon as they wake up. <laughs> they just come out of their dormancy. They don't hibernate. They go dormant because they wake up and they shit throughout that, that period. Yeah, well, where, well we've talked about this. We have this. to know that four years ago. But, but why were we just raised on lies? Uh, well, because I think that w- there wasn't a gradient of dormancy, hibernation, uh, deep sleep. 
it was just bears hibernate. And I think that they, a bunch of like bear scientists got together and, you know, they, they, not, they nailed their 99 theses to the doors of Bear Weekly. And they said, no, they wake up and they shit. We've devoted our lives to finding this out. They don't actually sleep the whole time. They get up and they shit and then they eat a bunch of berries. And yes, they create a dung cork that blocks them up, but they still wake and they shit. <laughs> Bear scientists, somebody finally, not good collaborators. Somebody finally was able to to get in there mm-hmm. as a bear. Yeah. That was actually George Became Wentz's last job. Is they sent him in as a bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, wait. So Go ahead. Uh, when, I, when I was in Raton, this dude that lives in Taos now that uh, has... He's been friends with Billy Wayne and Matt Davis for a long time. Lives out in Taos. He's been hanging out with these uh, people, like hippie type, you know, people in uh, Taos. And hearing about the, the, well, he said Sasquatch a couple times. And then he was like, said that people that have talked to the Sasquatches out there said that they like to be called the ancient ones. Okay. And you could have gotten some of this shit in Eureka or Hood River. But that uh, the ancient ones control portals between dimensions right and that's why we don't find their bodies whatever Mm -hmm. and they're just like security guards or like you know they're just they just like check in now and then but they're they're cosmic doormen all all over the place yeah yes they bounce they'll bounce you out of here if you keep acting up if you keep setting fires that is like the new cool Uh, thing in uh sasquatch wendigo uh ancient ones that's what they all say is that they uh they're actually like from space Because it's not cool enough to just have an ancient forgotten race of hominids in the woods. Now they have to be David Bowie, too. (laughs) Now they're also in Labyrinth. Just let us us have Sasquatches. Quit trying to fucking tart up Sasquatches. I mean, that's why we don't find their bodies. Perfect. We don't find bear bodies either because they die in the deepest parts of the woods. I found a bear body. <laughs> yeah, it's yours, Greg. <laughs> oh, Becker. I uh, figured the thing out. You should watch with the, the hibernation. You should watch the Chris Colt Dark Side of the Ring because that guy's like pretty much just like you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like looking Shut at a mirror up. for you. I don't, I don't know. God, it, 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 that was <laughs> that was that was a fucked up one because he was never even a thing. Like a big deal. Right. So he didn't even have the trappings of fame. He was just like a gutter punk slut. <laughs> yeah, he was a he was like a fucking oogle in the sixties who was a homosexual whose tag team partner was a man named Dupree who had like a giant like pompadour and mustache and they dressed as Hell's Angels in leather and everyone was like, These guys are tough, you better watch out. They're just dressed like a Tom of Finland painting. But everyone's like, Whoa, these are the baddest guys there is. These guys must love all the pussy. That's why they dress like that. <laughs> but yeah, they that, looked that, like each other, which is always funny. Yeah, yeah, it they was looked similar to one another. <laughs> and they were way ahead of their time, dude. That guy was born in 1946, and he was Whoa. like, "I'm a homosexual." That was his angle. Was that he was a gay guy? <laughs> <laughs> and he did the Nazi thing. Yeah, they would come out as Nazis, Becker, Whoa. and they, everyone would be like, "These are the scariest, straightest men alive, honey, <laughs> honey, don't look." Don't I don't want them to steal you away from me. Yeah, they 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 could have gotten torn apart if the Hell's Angels found out that they were getting used as a wrestling gimmick. I wanted to know more about the IP lawyers of the Hell's Angels finding out that there's there's two pompadoured homos running across the Pacific Northwest being like, We'll stretch ya and we'll plug ya and we'll make you bleed. We'll get every juice out of your body. Whether you like it or not, we won't use our hands. We'll juice you with our mouths or our butts. And the Hells Angels are like, you know, we got bigger fish to fry than these tiddlywinks out there. Yeah. And no, I would imagine if you see a flyer with Hells Angels on it, you're going to want to beat the shit out of those two. You'd think those so. Those two hombres. But like the Hells Angels, that was like a thing they did. They would like weaponize, uh, you know, homosexuality. They would kiss each other in public. Like that was like a cool thing to do back no, then. No, they didn't. They did too. I've read a bunch of Hells Angels books. <laughs> that you wrote. <laughs> the fan nice one, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> that you collaborated on. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sam Talent's next novel is a collaboratory experience between him and Chris Colt's. I should write Chris Colt's book. Yeah. <sighs> uh, Sorry. Hold on, I have a hiccup. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> oh. It's not all fun and games, is it, boys? Uh, but you know what is fun and games? You know what's fun, guys? Underwear. Oh. Yeah. You know? <sighs> Having your undies on? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I had underwear nice on today, undos. I wouldn't have had my visible cock through my sweatpants. <laughs> you had no underwear. I burnt through them because I wasn't wearing sheets. Just sheath. sweatpants. Yeah, just sweats. Jeez. Yep. And you know that I'm God. farting. You know I'm farting. You should have... You should have woken up to being in cuffs. Yeah, I should have. I should have been. You should have been. Incarcerated. You should have been in a wheelchair, handcuffed, uh-huh. legs shackled, penis shack with a hood on it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like a falconry hood, <laughs> like a little bird would wear. Uh-huh. And I'm like, to me, cock. And then it like rests on my lip. That's a fun bit. See, if, if, if we were more evolved... We would be able to do stuff like uh, cock falconry with our friends, where you know, like you, Lund, you leave the room to get me a cup of coffee, and I come back, and the next thing you know, I say to me, Excelsior, and there's just a little cock with a hood on on my wrist, and I'm like, give it a kiss, you know? That's the kind of fun we should be having, but we can't. What? Oh no! This couple that supposedly wanted to bang you has turned you onto a whole new scene. And you know what? I would have been honored to serve. Where we're at cock play, cock pranks mm-hmm. with the boys, huh? Here All is right. here we cock go. Cock pranks, <laughs> and uh, life is like a hurricane. Here in cock, cock pranks. pranks. Why don't you drain my vein? Here in here cock, cock pranks. pranks. It's not a bird. I dyed it brown. It's not a turd. <laughs> Pass it around. Dog break. Spin my dick like a helicopter blade here in cock prank. Um, look, if I know one thing about our listenership, it's that they already know about work shirts and air vents and breathable shorts. But what about your dick and balls? What about your dick and or balls? What about if you're in the uh, the small forgotten minority <laughs> that is just the ones with dicks and one no the, and yeah, no balls? One or the other. Well, there's guys We're out there. I mean, they're out there. Oh yeah, all balls, no dick. Some some people had to choose because there was a fire. Right. <laughs> some people, you know, oh. uh, it couldn't. She came up short on rent. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> What do you want to do? Pawn my necklace again? No, give him that dick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. You have a big gambling debt. Mm-hmm. Which digit? Well, are we talking fingers, toes, and everything in between, or what? Because I could lose a ball. Look, I'm a piano player. Still place a bet or two. <laughs> Don't take away my money makers. Take away my take away my little falcon. Uh, <laughs> Also, I pull into town today. I finally make it down to this town that I live in, and I turn right, and the feed store is up in flames. It's just there's a five-alarm fl- fire. Uh, you know, the, the street's all blocked <laughs> there's off. There's five-alarm chili. Yeah, there's five guys, burgers and fries. Uh, someone had a peanut allergy, so they had to come down and hit him with the ephedrine. Yeah, so I just, I just returned to a world of flame. Um, and you know what? That's what it's like Damn. when you don't wear sheath brand underwear. Your balls live in a world of flame, and uh, you can't call the fire marshal because they'll take away your kids. If they have to come to the house again because your balls are on fire, guess what? <laughs> kids are going to CPS. Everybody seems to be forgetting about their comfort. I know I am. That's why I only wear chaps, because I, I, I worry more about what I present to the world <laughs> than how comfortable I am. Everyone forgot about comfort except for sheath underwear. They make underwear with two pouches. Put your dick in one pouch and your balls in the other, and everybody will live. But if you don't, <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> Put your dick in one pouch and your balls in the other, and nobody gets hurt. <laughs> and that was Robert Patton's just goal, walk away. actually. Yeah, when, uh, you know, uh, uh, when a former army general or whatever, Robert Patton, decided to make sheath brand underwear, it's because he wanted an easier way to take someone's package hostage. 
And uh, <laughs> and that's what he did because these things, I mean, the Lindbergh baby had it easier. My guys are all tied up. <laughs> I like to call them Gypsy Rhodes, you know, because <laughs> they wear a little pink hat. Uh, <laughs> hey, baby, why don't you come back to my place and I'll introduce you to Gypsy Rose Blanchard. <laughs> She dumped that uh, that hose beast that uh, she was married yeah, to. Yeah, that guy who was ten toes down for Turns her out he was... she was in prison. And then she gets out and Maxim's Turned like, down. why don't you do a spread of this season's hats? And she's like, ah, you know? Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, shit. Oh. So yeah, uh, it's a total game changer whether you're working in the office or hitting the track on a sunny day. We know how much you guys love hitting the track. You know, when the sun's out, you guys are like, oh, time for a 5K. You guys don't think, man, maybe I can set the new fucking time challenge on Diablo. Uh, so yeah, I love I love sheath underwear. Uh, I wear them typically on the plane to keep me humble, so I uh, they don't have to divert the thing and land it in the Grand Canyon to fit my cock in somewhere. Yeah, it'll, it'll fit. Except for, except for today, yeah. Typically, you're rock and sheath, and you're doesn't matter that you're above uh, most laws, right. you know, because mm-hmm. you're keeping it in your pants. It's a secret. Yeah. What's going on in there? Right, it's Owen's business. Fuck it's between me and a law. And uh, this plane's not going to land because I believe in one more. Uh, so, yeah, uh, whether you're a Muslim extremist or just a good old fashioned uh, Christian guy, uh, your dick and balls will probably fit in these pouches. But remember, if you are a Muslim extremist, uh, Robert Patton doesn't want you wearing these things because a lot of his buddies died to keep you from wearing them. And uh, so, yeah. If that's the thing, if you're a moderate Muslim, that's fine. Robert doesn't care, okay? But if you if you're praying more than four times a day, you better keep your uncut cock out of these undie pouches. All right? Because that's not why that's not why BlackRock gave him the money to develop this undie. Uh, they've got their own pouch, the uncut. Uh, they do. I don't know if they double I don't know if they would double pouch. Yeah. But it's there. My falcon wears two hoods. <laughs> They're stretching fabric that sculpts your body. What? <laughs> Since when? <laughs> Spanx? Spanx for dudes? Yeah. Uh, they're called Hanks. They're called Chad Hanks. <laughs> and spandex fabric blend to keep you cool. Sheath will have you both looking and feeling amazing. Go to sheathunderwear.com and use code CHUBBY to get 20% off your first order. Plus, Sheath Underwear's 100% money back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code C H U B B Y. Get Sheath Underwear. Support the show. Support your balls. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> hey, are your balls cold? <laughs> Suck it. Why don't you put them in your own mouth and keep them warm that way, like a robin hiding her eggs? Uh, uh, so yeah, I'm home for uh, so what? Home for a little bit, and then I'll see you in Indianapolis, huh, Becker? Or I mean, lunch. you're flying. You're flying out Friday. Yeah. Well, I might fly up to fucking Detroit on Thursday and try and buy a house. We'll see. That was already bought for you. No, dude. We put the offer in. Oh, yeah. We didn't talk. I went to bed. Is that what happened? We did the pod, and then we didn't talk. Okay, yeah. Well, we put the offer in, and uh, someone else got the house because they decided they would waive the inspection. Mm. So mm, we're that's not dangerous. Look, we already haven't seen this house in person, so we're not going to waive the inspection. All right? We'll play it as loose as yeah. we can, but uh, I want to know if the pipes are made of chalk. Or if there's any, mm. uh, you know, indigenous burial mounds underneath the home. Cause, uh, Did Eminem ever live here so that I can charge money for people to come in and hang out? Right, yeah. Did Chet Hanks get conceived in this house? <laughs> Did Joan Cusack suck her brother off for a roll in gross point blank in this house? Uh, uh, come Did on. she? Uh. It's what? That really happened? No. Yeah, that's what happened, Becker. God. It's uh-uh. crazy. You don't want to know what Patricia Arquette did. What? I don't want to know. Yeah, I'm don't tell you. me. I won't tell you. Thank you. So we uh, have uh, we we the, you know I I'll, I'm, I'm excited for your big show in Terre Haute. That'll be huge. 
<laughs> yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully it's cool as hell. I might pop I'm in, come. To maybe I'll feature long, for you. Time. Wouldn't that be fun? Don't come. Come on. Just let me have. <laughs> let me have a night. You know. I have a night to myself without you <laughs> bursting in. You show up halfway through my set loudly. <laughs> All Whoa. eyes on you. Whoa, it's Lund. <laughs> yeah, you have some bit that you decide Whoa, to Lund's do. Lund's up there? Does that mean I'm that going I on hate. next? <laughs> It doesn't involve me at all. Yeah. You didn't clear it with me. You just do it. Yeah. Like you like you think uh, you're acting like on your phone you have a reserved, like a specific seat. So you're trying to find this particular seat. I'm and you're bumping just crowd people working aside. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. Farting. Yep. My sweatpants uh, are on. <laughs> but there's no hood on the Falcon, if you know what I mean. He's not asleep. He's he's waiting to feed. <laughs> He's <laughs> he's trying to find his seat. Oh fuck! But yeah, it'll be it'll be a time. It'll be fun. Yeah, when worlds Why collide. Wouldn't it be? And then yeah, being together, comedy attic, one of the few places that um, I haven't been with you. That's like in the top whatever. I don't know where it would land. Some people's favorite. So. I'm sure it's overall in the top 10, top 12 places uh, in the U.S. I bet it's to, great. To, they would never book to me have a time. until I sent in the team, you know? Yeah. And now here we are. I got to say, I am really on the edge of a toilet calamity right now. So this <laughs> next right? this next nine minutes is gonna be a race against my butt. <laughs> I only have to take a whiz. That's good. I drank my fishbowl of uh, soda water <laughs> and some some and looks regular like, water as well. What is that? It looks like whiskey and soda water. That's good. Yeah, no, I came home and I ate a big can of beans. I hit the ground (laughs) running at home and I ate some beans with some chili oil in it. Went to bed. Went to bed, woke up, talked to you guys, and now, my God, there is a fissure breaking (laughs) underneath me. And uh, I want to feed the devil, you know? I got scared after I told Becker before you got in yesterday that uh, when we were at Kayvon's church... Uh, I was talking. We made sure that nobody had left behind empty cans. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, I'm just like, oh, boy, you have to shit soon. Like, you have to get get going. You know, no handshakes and, and hugs. Yeah. I had to say, I'm le- I have to leave now. <laughs> and I hustled to the car, and it was, woo, it was fucking scary. And it was one of those, it's because uh, I had only eaten, like, once earlier in the day and i had drank whatever you know some water and stuff so it was just like time there was no time out there was no rain delay it was fucking no time to pull the tarp over the field you gotta get right to the dugout i understand and that's where i'm at right now but hey you know what good if i were to accidentally dump my pants on this pod (laughs) that would be what it's all been leading to you know, take that, us into the bathroom. That's the butterfly effect oh. of the podcast. Finish on, finish on the <laughs> toilet. That's what I do. Yeah, that's what you do because you <laughs> linked masturbation and pooping. You're disgusting. Not me though. I keep them separate. What if I wake it's up hard. on the plane next time and I'm just jerking off, <laughs> and there's an air marshal with a gun to my head, and he's like, "Stop or I'll pull the trigger." And I'm like, "If you pull the trigger, I'm gonna pull mine." You know. No, you know what? He has the, the gun pin. to my head, and then I just put my head down to my dick, and I'm like, I'll do it! I'll do it! <laughs> I, I hold my dick right beneath my mouth, and I'm like, I'll do it! I'll do it! You know? You can do that kind of thing on a fucking plane, especially in first class. In a dream. Mm-hmm. God, oh yeah. This is. <laughs> oh. Don't move. Uh, freeze. Play it safe. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, no. I'm going to ride this out, man, because I'm dedicated. I'm dedicated to these people who spend their time with us. You know, the pod right now, I don't know if you saw this, if you checked the chartable, Becker, but we are the 73rd most popular podcast in Russia as of right now. I didn't <laughs> so, check Russia, but that's what the pretty hell? awesome. I, I, I don't know what that means, but uh, hey. We welcome you. Yep. Okay? I'll I'll be the dancing bear for oligarchs. I don't give a shit. The only flag that I salute is the one called Wells Fargo, because <laughs> they keep my money safe. All right? 
You almost went over there. That would have been crazy. Yeah, I know. I think that's probably somebody, why. Somebody knows who you are over there? Uh-huh. You we are... A lot of downloads there. Ex- excuse me. Yeah. You are some talent, no? From Chubby Behemoth. Like third, third, <laughs> the Behemoth. Yeah, I don't know why. I think it's because Snowden and I are pen pals. I probably shouldn't say that, but uh, I've been writing to Eddie. Yeah. I actually send him uh, I send him Archie uh, comics because uh, that's all that keeps him sane. I would never commit treason unless you gave me a good reason. <laughs> unless Wells Fargo uh, was in the mix. Yeah. WF, protect them at all costs. Becker, what do you know about hash pills? Have you heard Ooh, of these? I do know about hash pills. What kind of hash? I don't know, but some guy dropped me four of these little hash pills. And they're blue, not because they're fentanyl, but because they were in my uh, blueberry ice cream snooze uh, container here. But yeah, I don't know. I want to eat one, but I'm scared that I'm being poisoned. No, it's just heat activated already and... They're good to go. It's just mm-hmm. like easier than an edible because you don't have to consume calories with it, or have. I am a bunch worried of about that fat in your system for it to work. Um, I don't want to go full Greg the Hammer Valentine, but I prefer the hash <laughs> suppositories. I'll bet you do. I bet you do because it's sit on it, Potsy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, if you want to be real high, sit on it, Potsy for sure. You're Whoa. shoving weed up your ass. Yeah. That's how far you've fallen? Yeah. He's our I own little do baby it, like, reindeer. I all the time or recreationally, but if you're like really sick and like just want to sleep the day away, a weed suppository is a quick way to fucking just call it a day. And is this because your mouth is full of Pop-Tarts and gravy, <laughs> so you can't fit any more weed in there? So you have to use your, <laughs> your forbidden mouth? Yeah, dude. God's... Secret tongue, as you call it. Yeah, and you don't. It doesn't go through the liver. You don't process it the same, so it's just smacking your system yeah, high. So if you're having, goes through your butt. Yeah, they invented them for people with like <laughs> cancer, and then they do like a lighter version. Their mouths women. were sewn shut. Yeah, women yeah, I know. With bad people menstrual cramps. <laughs> they give them uh, vaginal suppositories. That's what you use. I have used a vaginal one. It's the same thing. It's just not as strong. Man, well, you're, you're saying just... women aren't strong enough to get high no, like the men. This is just forty milligrams That's not lower cool. for some reason. I think you it's so like a woman with pH cramps balanced. can like still go to work, <laughs> whereas like the butt pills, like mm. see you tomorrow. Yeah, they're like, I gotta get yeah. to the fucking roller rink. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta eat, I gotta fucking shove my pussy packer so I can get out there. Remember when they tried to bring back roller derby? In oh. like the late nineties. Oh, it's They're it's back. It back no, no, it was right on now. Spike TV. Oh, on TV, Spike yeah. TV. Yeah, yeah, and they would do back body drops and shit. Uh-huh. They were doing like gorilla press slams oh, yeah. and probably Canadian destroyers too, because that was just the time. Everybody was. That's right. I'm going to uh, <laughs> do a Colorado destroyer on my toilet <laughs> in exactly two minutes and ten seconds. <laughs> God. How far away are you from a toilet? Uh, well, that's the thing. I like to think I'm an optimist, so I'm just surrounded by toilets. <laughs> You're in the basement, which is the toilet of the house. That's right. So that's you got that working for you. I've been calling the anus the foot of the butt. <laughs> and that's been... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it stinks. <laughs> like the ninjas? It's the, it's the foot of the butt. <laughs> uh, shout out to Jordan Rust and the rest of the Funky Bunch who came out this weekend. It was a little... You know what I want to do? And I'm sure that you guys are going to roll your eyes and Lund, you're going to throw up all over your dog. In, uh, I think it's November now? Whenever we're in Philadelphia, I want to do a little Chub Fest. I want to do a little meetup somewhere. I want I want to do a full-on Chubby Behemoth Festival. Uh, but I think we got to start slow. In Lund, I'm going to let you Fucking plan Lita. the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. Yeah. That's a cool collab. <laughs> yeah. You think of a you think of a thing that's going to take a bunch of work, and then <laughs> dust your hands off and go lay down in some apples and worms. <laughs> how how much work do you think it's going to be to say, hey, we're going to be at this place. This is where you're all staying. 
These are the hours you're allowed to see Becker. He'll be in the cage until sunset. Uh, <laughs> Anyway. Well, pick, just picking a place is is most of it, I would suppose. Your house. Posting. So that's cool. <laughs> Your house, Lund. <laughs> yeah, come on down to Trinidad. Yeah. Y'all, Go. take the train. Oh, that'd be fun if we did a train meetup. You know where you guys can see us yeah. every week is uh, on <coughs> patreon.com slash show behemoth. Go on over there. Uh, join up. Uh, you've been conscripted into the army of the undead. And also, you can see me and Lund uh, in Bloomington, Indiana, this weekend. And then in Providence next weekend. And then, hey, Eugene. Shout out to Seth Milstein up there in Eugene. We had two shows sold out on Thursday, May 9th. And instead of just being happy with that, they've decided to, quote unquote, open up the big room. So now, neither of the shows are sold out, and we've got another 100 (laughs) tickets to sell. So... There we go. Hey, come on, let's do it. Eugene, come see us, and then Descend. and then Seattle. Descend from the hill. We'll be in Seattle. Uh, SamTalent.com has all the dates you need, and I have a date with Destiny right now <laughs> with the devil. Yeah. So you guys wrap it Bye, up. Bye, everybody. I have to do it. We're good. Adios. So long, friend. Bye.